Hey guys, Sonny Bryson here. And as you guys know, everyone wants to grab money and multiply and make that money grow, right? Investing, that's what it is. But not every investing is as easy to get into. For example, traditionally to get into real estate, you need either a big down payment or to pay in cash for it. And that's a whole different deal. But the answer is it's very expensive to get into it. So how can you go ahead and invest into real estate without having a ton of money? And that is what this video right here is all about. But I do have to give you guys a fair warning. By the way, you need like five bucks or 10 bucks to get started, not that much money at all. But the answer is that overall, all this video gives you five ways. I only recommend way three and also way five. One, two, and also four are not ways I actually like, but I will talk about that way you know exactly why I don't like them whatsoever. So it's very important to understand exactly, hey, why don't you like it, Tommy? Is it good, is it bad, and why, 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 right? You wanna ask why if you wanna continue to actually learn. So that's what this whole video is going to be about. And on top of that, guys, if you guys are new here, make sure also subscribe, hit the bell, get notified, on top of that, also destroying the like button. And by the way, guys, if you guys are walking around and find another piece of $20 bill, let me know, because this one, I don't know where the other half or the other 75% of this bill actually is. I did laundry, I got this, I don't know what's going on, but I haven't been able to sleep for the past 10 days because of this, okay? I'm mad. Now guys, the very first way to get into real estate is basically through an app called Funrise. And by the way, I made a whole video breaking down the app about a year ago and I did not like it then and I still don't like it today. And there's also new apps out there, for example, called Concrete and also Londa. Both apps, there's not a lot of information on, but especially Londa is very sketchy and I don't recommend it whatsoever. And Concrete is just not enough information out there. So the most trustworthy one is Funrise. And by the way, again, just because it's trustworthy does not mean I actually recommend it because basically everyone that likes the concept of Funrise, which basically every investor out there does not like the one problem, the one caveat, which is basically liquidity. When you invest into Funrise, if you wanna take your money out, you can request that, but you don't know, there's no guarantee exactly when you're actually gonna take your money out and when you're actually going to be able to actually get it back. Because as you guys know, when you're buying an asset, right, like real estate, you can't just say, hey, I want my share out of the market, right? out of this house. No, it's gonna be hard to actually liquidate your share. So there's also that. So you have to keep that in mind. Liquidity is a major factor when it comes to Fundrise. Now on top of that, to get started with Fundrise guys, you need to run $500 or a thousand or 10,000. Or for example, if you're actually an accredited investor, which basically means, hey, if you make more than 200K every single year, or have a million dollars in assets, you are a credit investor, which then you can go ahead and invest 100K directly with Fundrise. But again, the major issue is liquidity. If you put that much money into Fundrise, you don't know when you're gonna get that money back, but you do know, hey, they're gonna take the rents and basically pay you that money out in dividends. So you will get a return on your money, yes, but you just don't know when that original payment you actually gave them is going to come back to you. And you have to do the math for that, okay? It's called opportunity cost because basically if you have a better opportunity coming along or emergency you might be stuck and you might not be able to take that money out and even if you are there might be a penalty for early withdrawal so you have to keep that in mind on top of that because of taxes and also the fees they actually charge you for example advisor fee and management fee of around one percent in reality that's also going to eat up on your dividends you're actually getting every single year so if you're making for example nine percent expect to run 8% or closer to 6% with taxes and everything actually included. So you have to keep all those factors in mind. It's not just, hey, I make dividends, it's great, everything is good. No, there's also taxes and fees you have to also put into your numbers. But overall, I don't like it because of the liquidity issue and putting my money somewhere that I can't actually get it out when I actually want to, okay? That's the whole concept. If I have a piece of real estate, at least I can say, for example, hey, let me go ahead and sell this property because basically I, I just don't want it anymore, okay? But this is just completely different. Now, the second option is basically Peer Street. Now, Peer Street is basically you becoming a real estate investor by lending money to people that want to get into real estate investing. So basically, you become a lender. It's kind of like lending club, but for real estate where all the loans are just for real estate and that's what you're actually doing. So in a way, you're actually investing just into debt, which is actually pretty cool. But overall, the big con is that basically, hey, 
it's only for accredited investors. So basically, you either have a million dollars in assets or make 200K a year plus. And even then, you have to invest 1K, and that is the minimum. On top of that, you have to keep your money in there between six to 24 months. And most of the loans that are actually being made are not to mortgages, okay? That's not what you're doing here. You're actually lending money to contractors that actually need that money to go ahead and rehab a property and do short-term loans. So that's why the interest you actually make on those loans is around between six to 12%. But then the risk of default is a lot higher. So although you might make six to 12% within that six to 24 month period, in reality, you face the problem of, hey, what if they can't pay? And then you have a foreclosure and then you have to figure out exactly, hey, how do I go ahead and flip this property right here? But then again, that's all about underwriting and basically how much money they give compared to the value of that house. So it's very difficult to actually do. But the answer is it is a very risky way to actually get into real estate investing because basically you're investing into short term loans, which can be very, very risky. And that's why you're basically getting paid a lot of money, 12% a year on your money is a lot of money, right? We can all agree on that. But by the way, okay, Tommy, why this option here for credit investors? The answer is eventually, if you keep investing correctly and keep doing what you're doing today, the answer is in the future, you will become an accredited investor and I want you to have more options on things you can actually do with your money. Now on top of that guys, in the description, I actually included more options for a credit investor, for example, Cross Street and also Streetwise, okay? Also ways to invest, but again, Liquidity is a problem, so understand that. When it comes to crowdfunding, liquidity is always going to be a problem when it comes to real estate and also crowdfunding. That is always going to be an issue, so always keep that in mind when you're trying to invest into real estate through crowdfunding. Now, way number three is basically the Burr method, right? As you guys probably know, Burr with four R's. And the idea is you buy a property, you rehab it, you rent it, you refinance it, and then you go ahead and repeat. That's the entire concept. Now, this is a very good way to get into real estate and doesn't require like that much money, but in reality, it does, right? Because it's still like a big down payment in a sense. But the answer is the big risk that basically, hey, if I buy a property, right? I remodel it, right? That means I need to know exactly what my numbers are. That way, I'm not buying a property for way too much money, rehabbing it for way too much money, and now I have this massive property that I basically spent a lot of money on, but it's not going to return me a lot of money or enough money. Then I go ahead and I rent it. I refinance it also, and then I repeat this over and over and over again. Now, if you wanna be very risky, you do this with a very small amount of equity in those homes, meaning you did not put in a large down payment, and you're also hoping that the tenant, the person renting there, is actually going to pay all the costs. Sometimes that won't be the case depending on the deal you're actually doing. Now, I don't like that, right? I don't like the risk because basically everything has to go correctly. If you have five homes that you actually did this for, in reality, say you actually lose three tenants or for example, you lose your job, what do you do then, right? Tommy, I got another tenant. Yeah, that's, that's really easy to say, but what if something happens to the market and everything goes to trash, right? Then you have a massive problem on your hands. And that's why if I do this, I wanna do it with a big amount of equity, a great down payment, that way, even if I lose my job or I lose a tenant, I can still have enough money to actually go ahead and kind of carry the property along while things actually recover. And by the way, if you do this correctly, you're going to have to have a ton of money in emergency funds, okay? So also keep those factors in mind. But basically, it is one of my favorite ways when it comes into getting into real estate. And by the way, the best person that does this on YouTube is probably Meet Kevin. So go ahead, if you want to, check out his channel. He's called Meet Kevin, and he does a great job when it comes to buying a property for less than it's worth, rehabbing it, then grabbing it and renting it. He bare, he doesn't really refinance at all, but the answer is he does a great job at buying, also remodeling, and then going ahead and renting and keeping that property for a very long time. But again, I don't like the risk of carrying so many mortgages and also having to have everything go right for you. And if it doesn't go right, you might be in trouble. So also, Keep those factors in mind. On top of that, way number four is basically getting into a syndication. Tell me, what is a syndication? Well, in reality, syndication is when a bunch of investors pool in money to go ahead and buy multifamily homes. Now, someone that's doing this right now is called Grant Cardone. And he has, for example, Grant Cardone Capital, where basically, if you're not an accredited investor, you need 5K to start. And if you are a credit investor, you need around 100K, right? That's the entire idea. So basically, 
you need a ton of money either way. Now, the big idea is that what you're doing is you buy multiple units, right? And you buy that, you pay the interest on that loan, and you hope the price actually appreciates with time. You get paid rents, and that way you actually make some money. But in around 10 years, you can actually go ahead and take your money out with all the appreciation, if it actually happened, and then you actually go ahead and get some money, right? That's the whole concept. So basically, we actually get together, we buy this home, we pay the interest, we get some rents, we keep that money, obviously. Then in the end, we actually go ahead and sell. But the answer is, Grant Cardone does have a lot of fees in this entire syndication. So you also want to keep that in mind. Tommy, do you recommend it? The answer is, I don't recommend things that I myself would not get into. So in reality, no, I, I don't recommend it. I wouldn't get into the whole Grant Cardone thing because basically, why would I leave my money with someone for 10 years, like trapped there basically, nobody to liquidate. And on top of that, with all the fees and also, the amount of capital he has in the deal, it doesn't sound like a good deal to me, and that's why I wouldn't do it. So overall, when it comes to Grand Cardone Capital, I don't really like it that much. Also, Fundrise, don't really like it that much. And also, Pier Street, although it is cool, it is very risky. And the last way is basically to do REITs investing. By the way, REITs are basically um, real estate investment trusts that actually traded in the US stock market, okay? Now, the idea is that, hey, if you wanna buy REITs that are focused on mortgages and also debt, you can do that if you want to. Or for example, REITs that are focused on properties, okay? Now, the idea is that although I don't have tens of millions of dollars, I only have like this $20 bill here, obviously, right? The answer is I'm actually a partial owner of skyscrapers in New York. So basically, I own a lot of properties partial owner by investing into REITs, meaning I can invest into real estate with only $5 or $10. On top of that, if I want to go ahead and sell my piece to get my whole money back, in reality, I can do that because basically liquidity is not really an issue when it comes to REITs. And that's why I invest into REITs, real estate investment trust a very good way to invest in the real estate if you don't have a lot of money. On top of that, you do get paid a decent amount of dividends. You also get some growth every single year. And also, liquidity is also a very good factor. So overall, if I have enough money to get into real estate, I'll do Burr, where I buy properties, I rehab them, I rent them out, and I keep them for a very, very long time, like forever, right? On top of that, if I don't have a lot of money, I'll do REITs. That way, I'm in the game, but I'm not worried about, hey, what if something goes wrong here? Or for example, what if I can't sell my investments, right? That's not something I actually want to deal with. So that's why I would go either REITs or also Burr. Burr, I, I, I can't say that word, but you guys get the point, okay? Burr with like four R's, okay? That's the whole concept here. But guys, overall, comment down below and let me know out of these five ways, which way best interests you. And by the way, I'll leave a link down below to my portfolio with the one finance. That way you guys know exactly the REITs I actually invest into and how I actually invest into it, okay? So again, link down below to that. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, well, go ahead and like the video on top of that. Also, if you're new here, subscribe me to the bell so you're notified. And if you wanna text me or talk to me one-on-one -on, -one on the phone, join my Patreon link down below or send me a DM on Instagram at Tommy Bryson. And also, if you wanna watch a full video on how to save the money up for a down payment, here's that video right here. I click my picture now. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. And as always, peace.